The first talk is by Rupul Goyal, who's going to tell us all about communication efficient NPC using fact secret share. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, I'm Vipul and I'll talk about communication efficient MPC using packed secret sharing. Uh, and thanks to my PhD student, Yifan Song, uh, I stole most of the slides from him. Uh, okay, so, so let's start with the basic setting first. So we are interested in information theoretic security or unconditional security. Uh, so when we talk about uh, information theoretic security, generally the honest majority setting comes to mind because that's what we can do unconditionally. But we can also talk about the dishonest majority setting where we have a pre-processing fix. So I'll, I'll talk about both of these uh, later. And uh, in this talk, we are mostly interested in communication complexity. So when we are talking about information theoretic protocols, generally communication complexity is the key efficiency parameter because the local computations are like linear operations. They are pretty fast. Uh, and communication typically ends up becoming the bottleneck, though not always. Uh, and we are interested in arithmetic circuits. So uh, the function is an arithmetic circuit. We have multiplication gates and addition gates over a finite field. And typically, I will represent the number of parties by n and the number of corrupted parties by t. So in this example, n is five and t is two. And I will assume that we have point to point channels between every- Ripul, sorry, I think folks online cannot see the slides. Oh no, you should use this one. Going to this. Okay. If you want to turn on, you can just move. That's working now. Thanks. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to change the view so that you have only this. How do I? I'm trying to start it from the current slide. I think it should be controlled. This is the current slide. Um, here, maybe one of these. Oh, yeah. I think it's working. Yeah. Okay. But maybe the folks online are seeing notes. But... Um, are you seeing the notes, folks online? And the next slide or not? No, no, we're not seeing the notes. We see the R getting played. Okay, anyway, so post online, you didn't miss much. Uh, we are just considering arithmetic circuits. And uh, yeah, we assume there's a point to point channel between every pair of parties. There's no broadcast or anything like that. And then, as usual, we will uh, focus on semi honest security versus malicious security. So during the talk, I will mostly focus on semi honest security, but almost all of our results can be ported to the malicious setting as well. So in the semi-honest uh, security, uh, there's an adversary which can uh, control a number of parties and it can just see the view of the corrupted, corrupted parties, but it cannot control the behavior of the corrupted parties. Uh, in the malicious security with a bot, uh, the adversary can see the views as well as direct the corrupted parties to do anything arbitrary uh, that it wants. And by the way, feel free to stop me at any point if you have any uh, questions. Uh, so the, uh, the most relevant to our talk is the corruption threshold. So commonly we consider sort of two types of corruption thresholds. So first is the honest majority, where we assume that only a minority of the parties are corrupted. Less than half of the parties are corrupted, the remaining are honest. And then we have the dishonest majority setting where we assume that uh, all except one party might be corrupted. But in this talk, I will sort of go to the suboptimal corruption threshold. So we can talk about suboptimal honest majority, uh, where the number of corrupted parties T is equal to 
1 minus epsilon times n by 2 for a constant epsilon. So we have uh, uh, the number of honest parties is at least half plus another constant fraction. And then the remaining can be dishonest. And we can talk about the suboptimal dishonest majority setting where only a constant fraction of the parties are honest and the remaining can be dishonest. As an example, let's say 5% of the parties are honest and 95% can be dishonest. So in our work, we are mostly focused on the suboptimal uh, uh, corruption threshold and let's talk about the honest majority setting first. Uh, so these are just like high level informal goals and informal results that we have. I will talk about more precise theorem statements later on. So the goal is to use packed secret sharing. If you don't know what packed secret sharing is, I will talk more about it later on. But uh, the high level idea is that in a single sharing, uh, we are packing multiple secrets. So our goal is to use packed secret sharing to obtain asymptotic improvements to the communication complexity of unconditional MPC. So now in the honest majority setting, where uh, let's say, you know, 55% of the parties are honest, we are able to construct an MPC protocol where uh, the communication is O of one by N field elements per gate per party. So if you, if you sum it up, uh, overall communication per gate would be O of one. So constant field elements across all parties. And the overall communication would be O of C, where C is the circuit size. And here I am ignoring the lower order terms. There are terms which are dependent on the number of parties, on the depth of the circuit. Uh, for simplicity, let's not talk about that. And uh, ours is not the first work to try to use packed secret sharing uh, to improve the communication complexity. There have been quite a few previous works, uh, starting from the work of Franklin and now from 1992. In fact, that is also the work which introduced packed secret sharing. Uh, so there have been quite a few works, but uh, getting the communication to be O of C was uh, open. And I'll talk more about the related works uh, later on. And then we can talk about the dishonest majority setting. And again, the goal is to use packed secret sharing. So here, uh, our goal is to construct a two-stage protocol. Uh, one having a pre-processing phase and then an online phase. Uh, so here, you know, some constant fraction of the parties are honest, let's say 5%. And in the online stage, online stage is the stage which is dependent on the inputs of the parties. The communication is again O of one by N field element per gate per party. So here note that as the number of parties increase, the communication per party goes down. And in the pre-processing stage, we have O of one field elements per gate per party. So if you sum it up across all parties and across the whole circuit, uh, pre-processing stage will be O of N times C and the online phase would be just O of C. Uh, so this also has implications to strict honest majority where we can instantiate the pre-processing phase using like standard honest majority protocols. I'll talk more about that. And uh, to my knowledge, there have been no previous works in trying to use packed secret sharing uh, for the dishonest majority setting. And comparing this with, for example, the speeds protocol, uh, which is in the dishonest majority setting, we kind of get it factor of an improvement in the communication complexity. And the question is, why should we care about the suboptimal corruption thresholds? So, you know, sometimes it might make sense, maybe sometimes not. As an example, there have been some works on using MPC over blockchains, uh, where the miners uh, sort of play the role of the parties and, uh, you know, following the honest majority blockchain assumption, we assume that a majority of the participating miners are honest. Right, um, or something like maximum 49% of the miners can be corrupted. But this 49%, I mean, it's pretty arbitrary number. We get this because you know that's what allows us to realize blockchains. But if we instead assume that only 45% can be 
corrupted uh, it doesn't seem like such a big change and if it gives you like a factor of an improvement or something like that then maybe this is worth doing or we can think about voting right in the dishonest majority setting uh, in the voting protocol if almost all parties are corrupted then probably voting is doomed anyway because they can anyway elect any candidate of their choice so maybe it's not such a bad thing to assume that let's say 5% of the parties will be honest or uh, we can think about like any uh, mpc protocol where we have a large number of parties and maybe it makes sense to consider uh, suboptimal corruption thresholds so here is the outline for uh, rest of the talk so i'll talk about our problem our theorem statements in a little more detail and compare it to prior works then uh, there's a key technique key technical tool which is which is behind uh, all of our results uh, which we call the problem of sharing transformation the idea is that you want to take secret sharing of one type and then convert it into secret sharing of another type so this is a very general tool which i think can be used even beyond uh, uh, our problem so i'll talk about that and i'll talk about the construction of our efficient sharing transformation and then finally i'll talk about how to use sharing transformation to build communication efficient mpc okay any questions so far okay good <clears throat> so now let's start with the honest majority mpc setting uh, if we talk about the optimal threshold then there have been a number of results which give us a, a protocol with overall communication circuit size times n n is the number of parties right and this is starting the very nice work of Dam Garden Nelson. And then there have been many other works. Most of them are focused on like either improving the lower order terms or improving the constants. But uh, the higher level terms has continued to stay this C times N. Going to the suboptimal uh, threshold, uh, there's this nice work of Franklin and now Franklin and Young, sorry. Uh, they're able to run uh o of n copies of the same circuit so if you're running the same circuit uh, multiple times then they can get communication which is uh, uh o of c which is the same as us except that ours is in the single uh <clears throat> single uh, circuit setting and then for a single circuit there are works by damgard ishai and so on some other people uh, so their communication is uh log times c uh, log of c times c and then we have some other works with polylog and then there's this very recent work uh, where they consider a restricted class of circuits namely highly repetitive circuits and they are able to get o of c right so the question is for any general circuit i want a single circuit i want to just run it once uh, can you get o of c communication and uh, this is the question that we answer affirmatively so this is a paper uh, from crypto last year uh, we have an arithmetic circuit and uh, uh, honest majority but with slightly suboptimal corruption threshold so there's an information theoretic mpc with o of c communication an example corollary, corollary is if t is 0.49 n the communication complexity of, is o of c so as the number of parties goes up the communication per party or the work that each party has to do comes down so <clears throat> this is a factor of an improvement uh, compared with the protocols in the standard honest majority setting so even though you are reducing the corruption threshold but you are gaining asymptotically in the communication and then let's move on to the dishonest majority setting which would be the focus of the talk of most of the talk today so first thing is we know that information theoretic mpc cannot exist without honest majority so this was known since the 80s and uh, to overcome this problem many works have considered a uh, circuit independent pre processing stage so in this pre processing stage uh, you know many parties uh, they get some r1 r2 some like correlated secrets which they can use in the online phase online phases when the inputs are available and uh, feasibility results in this setting were known uh, again since the 80s 
Killian showed that if you use OT correlations, just random OTs in the pre-processing phase, uh, <clears throat> you can get information theoretic MPC in the online phase. Then there was this IPS compiler, which uh, uh, had a more efficient version of Killian and so on. And then uh, there's also the speeds protocol. Uh, this was in the all but one corruption setting. Uh, again, that had a pre-processing phase and an online phase. In the pre-processing phase, generally we measure the efficiency in terms of how big the output of the pre-processing phase was. So the pre-processing data in speeds was O of uh, n times C, and the online communication was also the same. And the question is, uh, can we improve this if we relax this all but one corruption, if we go to slightly suboptimal, and we are able to do that, and we are able to remove this n factor from both preprocessing as well as online. So this is our results for the semi honest setting, but the same theorem holds even in the malicious setting. Uh, <clears throat> so we have this uh, finite field of size C plus n, where C is the size of the circuit, and uh, uh, one, uh, T is uh, one minus epsilon times N. And there's an information theoretic MPC which computes C with O of C elements of pre-processing data as well as communication complexity. And the technique here is, the key technique is what is known as the efficient sharing transformation protocol. And there are kind of other uh, sort of interesting smaller techniques we introduce what we call sparsely packed Shamir secret sharing scheme. Uh, we introduced uh, a notion of beaver triples, which we call packed beaver triples and so on. And I'll try to touch upon all of these. And we can also extend this theorem to malicious security and also to smaller fields. And suppose you're not interested in suboptimal corruption threshold. You only care about like strict honest majority. Uh, so our theorem has some implications to that as well. So what you can do is you can instantiate the pre-processing phase uh, with a standard off the shelf honest majority MPC protocol. So use state of art honest majority MPC. Uh, and once you instantiate that uh, using that, then you get O of C in the online phase and O of N times C communication in the offline phase or pre-processing phase. And this is the first result in the strict honest majority setting that achieves sort of sublinear communication complexity in the number of parties in the online phase. And it still maintains overall O of C times N uh, communication complexity across both the phases. So there are other related works which have tried to trade sort of uh, online and offline communication. Um, <clears throat> so they can achieve uh, linear or even sublinear communication complexity in the online phase. But uh, let me not read all of this, but the idea is that in both of these works, uh, offline phase becomes exponential size. Okay, so let me now focus on the key technical tool that we have, which is the problem of sharing transformation. Okay, so we know about secret sharing. Uh, <clears throat> so I will talk about two different thresholds, T and T prime, because I'm interested in packed secret sharing eventually. Uh, so T is sort of the security threshold, which is that any T shares together reveal no information about the secret. On the other hand, if you had T prime shares, you can reconstruct the secret S. And generally T prime would just be T plus one, but it can also be higher if you're talking about packed secret sharing. And I will denote uh, the shares by X or sometimes by just S and the brackets. Uh, so S is the secret here. And sometimes if I want to uh, write about vectors, so in packed secret sharing, you are sharing a vector of many values, then I'll just uh, use bold font for this. I don't think you can see my pointer, okay. 
<clears throat> and we are interested in linear secret sharing schemes. Uh, in a linear secret sharing scheme, if you have a share of S1, you have a share of S2, you add these shares together, you get a share of S1 plus S2. Okay, so what is a sharing transformation? So think about two linear secret sharing schemes of completely different types. They need not be Shamir, they might work in some arbitrary way, uh, <clears throat> but they are defined over the same finite field. So let's call them sigma and sigma prime. And then we have this function f, which defines a linear function. And the idea is that the parties hold uh, a sigma sharing x, which has this secret x. And what you want to do is you want to obtain a sharing of f of x, but not necessarily under sigma, maybe under another secret sharing scheme, uh, sigma prime. Okay, so the secret is evolving linearly and the secret sharing scheme might also change. And I would argue this is actually a very common problem uh, which we encounter all the time while designing MPC. I'll give you three examples. So the first example is that of degree reduction. Degree reduction can be seen as just an instance of a sharing transformation. Uh, <clears throat> so it typically shows up in MPC over large fields. So when we try to evaluate a multiplication gate, right? you have sharings of X and Y, maybe you locally multiply them, and then you can get a sharing of the result, but the degree goes up. So you can locally compute the result, but now you have a different secret sharing scheme. Still Shamid, but with the higher degree. And typically you would need to transform the result uh, to the original secret sharing scheme. Okay, so you have X and Y, local computation, you get another secret sharing of X times Y, and you want to move back to the original secret sharing of X times Y. So here, uh, F, which was the linear map, is just the identity map, and Sigma and Sigma prime, they are both Shami secret sharings, but with different thresholds. And then there's also something which is known as RMFE or reverse multiplication friendly uh, embeddings. And uh, they're typically used in MPC over small fields. And uh, here the idea is that sometimes you might have to move to large fields and you might have to multiply uh, secrets and so on. And when you do that, uh, you have phi. And when you multiply them, you get <coughs> Uh, X times Y, but encoded under Psi, which is a different type of encoding. And then maybe you need to come back to Phi. And here, all these maps are linear maps. So coming back from Psi to Phi uh, can also be done using a sharing transformation. Does anybody have a better laser pointer? It's a the Okay, the third and the last example I'll talk about is network routing. <clears throat> Maybe some people can see, okay. <laughs> So network routing is still a, it's still a problem which appears in MPC, and this is like this would be the focus of the of the talk. So network routing occurs when we are talking about MPC using packed secret sharing. So we are using let's say we are using packed Shami sharing to evaluate a single circuit, and the main difficulty here is to put the secrets in the right order. So let's say you have uh, a multiplication gate you have two groups of wires. So you are evaluating a batch of multiplication gates. So you might have X1, X2, X3, and then Y1, Y2, Y3. These are packed secret sharings, but maybe you need to change the order before you can do the multiplication just to align X and Y in the right way. So maybe you need to permute X1, X2, X3 might have to become X2, X3, X1. 
Sometimes you might even have to evaluate fan out gates where uh, you might need two copies of X1 in the output. So this can also be seen as an instance of a sharing transformation. And note that uh, the sharing transformation can also be done for vectors, uh, like maybe your secret X is a vector and F of X is also a vector. Uh, so this is, this is what we are really talking about here. Okay, any questions? Is the notion of sharing transformation clear? Okay, so now sharing transformations can be done. Uh, feasibility is not difficult. You can even use an off-the-shelf MPC protocol to do a sharing transformation. But our question is really how efficiently can you do sharing transformation? So we will try to do sharing transformation in, in batches. It occurs frequently in MPC and previous solutions, they can do sharing transformation in batches, but only when you are performing the same sharing transformation many times. So you have a sigma and a sigma prime, and you have F, and you have many instances of these, and you, you can make a batch and you can do. So something like this can be done using previous works. And this is sufficient actually for the first two examples, because you are doing the same type of transformation multiple times, like degree reduction. You are going from the same degree to the same degree many times. But for the third example, which is network routing, this is not sufficient. Uh, you might have to do different permutation every time. And uh, we will see why that is. Um, so you really need like different sharing transformations. So can we achieve uh, <clears throat> sharing transformations with linear communication complexity? We would like to pay just O of N for each sharing transformation uh, and then try to get efficient MPC using that. So here is our main theorem for sharing transformations. Uh, so we have this psi i and, uh, sorry, sigma i and sigma i prime and fi for i equals one to k. Here k would be the packing parameter. <clears throat> and what we show is that there's an efficient protocol against t corrupted parties, which transforms the secrets xi to xi prime where each xi prime is fi of xi. And each sigma i and sigma pi i prime could be entirely different, completely different secret sharing scheme. And the achieved communication per batch of transformations is O of n cubed by k square. And if k and n are linearly related, then this is just O of n fire transformation. And here I'm sort of implicitly assuming that uh, the secret sharing schemes, sigma i, sigma i prime, each share is just a single field element. But if each share is, is larger, multiple field elements, then the cost goes up. But for the purpose of the stock, let's just stick to the single setting. Each share, just a single element of the field. So we are trying to get a generic approach for sharing transformations, which work for all, all linear secret sharing schemes, all, all linear functions fi, and it would enable a new approach to do MPC uh, using packed secret share. Okay, so now uh, let's go over the sharing transformation construction, and I'll try to do this part briefly on the board. Uh, just to give you like high level idea. And the last part would be using sharing transformations to build communication efficient MPC. Okay, so let's uh, I still have a couple more slides. So a packed Shamir secret sharing, how does it work? So we choose a single polynomial. And then uh, P1, P2, Pn, they get points on the polynomials as their shares. And then there are multiple points on the polynomials where secrets can be encoded. So we would encode K secrets, K is the packing parameter. And some properties of packed Shamir secret sharing. Many of the natural properties are still preserved. This is still linearly homomorphic. 
you add uh, shares of X and Y, you get shares of X plus Y, and then you can multiply them. You can multiply shares of X and shares of Y. You, you will get a share of X times Y. The degree increases, uh, but you can do degree reduction and things like that. So we have linear and multiplicative, uh, we have additive and multiplicative homomorphism. So here's the overview of our construction. So first, we will try to reduce to preparing sharings of a random secret first. And then we will try to prepare a single sharing and then we will try to prepare a batch of sharings. Okay, so first is, Reduction to random secret. So suppose I give you a Should I use black one? Yes, this one is much, much, much. Okay. <laughs> So remember that we want to go from a secret under sigma to a secret under sigma i, such that if the original secret is x, the new secret would be f of x. Sigma prime. And now what I want to tell you is, If you are given a random secret R, which is shared under sigma, and let's say you have a random secret, you have F of R, but shared under sigma prime. Suppose in the preprocessing phase, the parties have this, then uh, that's enough to convert. So this is we have in the party and the goal is given x shared under sigma we want to recover f of x shared under sigma prime can people see if i write here Okay, so this is not very hard to do. So parties can locally compute Uh, you can just take your share of X and share of R, you can add it. And that gives you a share of X plus R just by linearity. Then all parties open shares to a designated party, let's say P1. So P1 gets X plus R, right? And then P1 can locally compute F of X plus R. And then P1 can send it to all the parties. So all the parties now have F of X plus R. And note that X is the secret here. P1 doesn't learn the secret. 
And we are in the semi honest setting, so don't think about parties deviating or something like that. And next step is all parties can compute f of x plus r minus So you have, sorry, minus f of r. And this would give you a share of f of x under sigma prime. And this is by linearity. f is linear, so f of x plus r is just f of x plus f of r. f of r is cancelled here, so you're left with shares of f of x. So now the problem just reduces to how to construct this. How to construct these random shares. Now, and note that if you wanted to build just random sharings under Shami, um, this is known from previous works. So assume that parties have random sharings under a Shami secret sharing scheme. So parties have, we'll assume that parties have uh, R1, R2 up to Rn. So these are like n polynomials, so here is the secret R1 on the first polynomial, R2, Rn on the last polynomial, and then like here might be, points on these polynomials might be shares of some party Pn. Okay. So now given these, shares under Shami, how do I get a share under, let's say, uh, Sigma? So we need to get shares under both Sigma and Sigma prime. Let's, let's focus on Sigma first. Sigma prime would also be the same. Now the observation is, uh, Let's say the ith share under sigma, let's call it SHI. This would be the share function. So we don't know how sigma works. ith share, jth share, they might all be generated using potentially different algorithms. But what we know is that this is linear. Share i is just a linear combination of all these uh, r1 to r. And this we know how to do. Uh, <clears throat> let's say the coefficients here are, so let's say shi can be written as summation ci ri. So each party would locally multiply their own share. For example, PI would locally multiply its own share under C1 to CN. And then uh, 
Um, so parties locally obtained shares of asset type, the shares of a share. This is because if you have a share of R, I here, you would, you can do this locally, constants are public, you will end up getting a share of SHI. Then all shares can be sent to PM. So PI gets SHI. And you can do this for every I. Unfortunately, what is the complexity that, uh, what, what is the communication here just for PI? So every party needs to send the share. So the total communication will be O of N for SHI. So across all the shares, total would be O of N square. I'm not doing any batting or anything like that so far. My goal was O of N communication. So, uh, you know, even though you can do something like this, but it doesn't give us the result that we want. So the next step is batching. And now the idea is you start with packed shami sharing. So you have R1, one up to R and A. And uh, N one up to R N. Okay. So we have packed secret sharings under Shamir. And now if uh, all the sig all the sigmas were the same this directly works but if the sigmas were different then we still have a problem so the problem is if sigma one up to sigma n are different then potentially you have to multiply different vector of constants for each position so here, for example, maybe you need to multiply C1 to Cn, but then uh, when you come to the next one, the constants change and so on. It's all linear, but different linear functions every time. So you cannot directly do this using packed secret sharing. And uh, since I don't have much time, just the high level idea to solve this problem would be that uh, you can take each polynomial. Okay, so let me focus on this polynomial. There are k secrets and there are k different constants. So let me call them c1, c2 up to ck. Every position needs to be multiplied by a different constant. Uh, you can do this, but it would increase the degree by two. So in Shami secret sharing, one of the properties is that you can multiply by a vector of constants. But if your vector has size k, the degree of this problem will increase by k. That's fine. So we do this for every polynomial, and then you add all of them up. And in that case, you will get a single polynomial, which will have the ith share for all positions. And then you can, you can reconstruct all of this to the party pi, who would get the, uh, the ith share for all the sigmas. And then uh, you can do this without actually increasing the communication. The total communication would still be O of n square. But now we have been able to handle a batch of n secrets. So the total communication hasn't gone up much at all. OK, 
Okay, so I have like two minutes. Okay, any questions about this? So let's see what I can go through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I think this is the main difficulty in network routing and you should be able to see the connection to sharing transformation pretty easily here. Uh, so we have this circuit and we want to uh, construct an MPC here. So the idea is that you would batch all the multiplication gates within a single layer into let's say batches of K, right? So if you look at this multiplication gate, uh, you know, it's getting wires from all over the circuit. So throughout we are using packed secret sharing. So this wire, this wire, they might all be coming from different packed secret sharing. Maybe you need like the first secret uh, of, this pack uh, secret sharing, the second of this, and so on. So you need to collect all of them into a single pack secret sharing. So sometimes you have to permute. Sometimes you have to collect secrets from different uh, pack secret sharing schemes. Uh, you might have to add and things like that. So all of these can be thought of as instances of sharing transformations. Sometimes you can apply sharing transformations directly. Sometimes you have to do a little more work. Uh, but sort of that's uh, that's why you need uh, sharing transformation. And it's it's different for every gate. Like every gate here, maybe you just have to swap like the first and the third secret. Uh, in other cases, it might be something completely different. So re you really need like different sharing transformations. Uh, and if you are able to prepare them efficiently, you can use them directly in MPC. Okay, maybe can you, when, when you ask, can maybe you can repeat it online. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, is this batching technique, uh, generalization of the batch opening technique for uh, n secrets with order n secrets? Batch opening technique. Yeah, so, where uh, you want to just n, n secrets are secret shared. Uh -huh. There was this technique in the when, uh, hard paper and the upper. Open and secrets with a secret set, you need total order and Yeah, actually, in the last step, I was kind of using that. You are packing all the secrets in a single polynomial and then you batch open all of them. So it, it kind of uses that as one of the tools. Okay, I guess we didn't have any questions offline. Let's find the speaker again.